Oh, yeah, baby. Y'all already know, man. We here, man. We back. Well, I'm back, you know. Hey, just want to let y'all know, man, we back. Uh, the title of this show, man, is something new, man. We're doing something a little bit different this time, man. A little bit different. Uh, the title of this show is called Talent Has No Division. Now, uh, if you worry about the highly underrated podcast, highly underrated sports podcast, we still got that. We still doing that. Uh, me and the fellas, we still doing that. By the way, uh, sorry, didn't introduce myself. I'm so used to just introducing everybody else. I'm Cordell, the owner of Highly Underrated Sports. And um, like I said, the Highly Underrated Sports podcast, we still doing that. That's still a thing. You know what I mean? Uh, I just wanted to take the time to do something a little different uh, because it just get back to the basis of the brand. You know, uh, I started this brand um, basically to focus only on small schools, D2, D3, NAI. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, with the podcast, we kind of focus on a wide range of sports. We focus on everything, you know, pro, pro sports, D1, D2, D3, everything. And we'll still give y'all that content for sure. But I wanted to just get back to the basis, man, and, and, and give y'all strictly small school. So talent has no division brought to you by highly underrated sports will be strictly small schools only. My D3 guys, my D3 girls, my D2 girls, my D3, my D2 guys, NAI girls, NAI guys, I'm covering everything, man. Trust me, I'm doing football basketball baseball we're gonna we're gonna touch on everything man it's gonna be a weekly thing i'm gonna try to stay as consistent as possible this really excites me because you know this is originally what i wanted to do anyway as far as the brand goes wanted to do something to just put on for the small schools i myself i play small school football you know d3 ball you know so uh we all got our seasons and reasons for why we uh ended up where we ended up but nonetheless hey man let's get right into this man y'all know i cannot start the show Without giving a shout out to our sponsor, man, what's popping popcorn, baby? Out in Las Vegas, man. Hey, don't worry, man. You a popcorn lover like me, like the squad, like the team, the highly underrated sports team, then you already know what's popping is where you need to be, man. This is some of the best popcorn I ever had in my life. Y'all seen the packaging, man. If not, go and check out one of them highly underrated sports episodes, man. Y'all see all of that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna have some get some more in for y'all, man, for the next one I shoot. Um, but if you want to reach out, man, if you're not in Vegas, that's okay. You can uh, go online at what's popping dot Vegas, W H A Z P O P P I N dot Vegas. And, uh, you know, you can look through there. You can place your orders there. Shipping, they do ship all across the United States. So, uh, whenever, whatever you put in your cart, price you see shipping is already included in that. So, the price you see is the price you pay. It's going to come to you, man. Airtight bags, still crunchy, still good, still taste good, flavorful. They got a bunch of different flavors, man. This is some good popcorn. Trust me. So, uh, man, and if you you don't want to put your orders in online, you want to do it the old school way, you can call the owner herself, Jen Jen, at 331-218-9304. Again, that's 331-218-9304, man. Make sure y'all take the time to go figure out what's popping, man. But, yeah, man, like I said, man, I'm excited for this, man. I'm excited for this. Like I said, I'm going to try to do this thing on a weekly basis. It's going to be something short, though. It's not going to be a long show. Uh, it's going to be something short, man, you know, where I just come in, get my bars off, get out. I also got a special surprise for y'all, man. The uh, vice president of the company, man, Marvin, uh, my boy Marvin, man, he's out in Atlanta right now. He's stationed in Atlanta, so he does his thing from Atlanta. He'll be joining in on this, man. He's going to be stopping by on this, man. So it's going to be doping again. We still got the Highly Underrated Sports Podcast with myself, Miguel, and Hoes. I know you know a lot of fans, man. Y'all been checking on that. And I know y'all been wondering why we ain't putting nothing out in a couple of weeks, man. We had a bunch. It's been a uh we decided to take a mid-season break because there's been a lot of different things going on which eat with each individual team member. A lot of important things, a lot of stuff came up. So uh schedules kind of conflicted. And then you know the holiday is coming up. So we just decided to take a little short break, but we will be getting y'all that content back. I want to say next week. So, yeah, stay tuned. But in the meantime, we're going to give you this, man. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into this episode. Now, I know a lot of y'all seen the title of this thing and was like, man, what? He tripping. They tripping. But no, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Title of the episode is Why D2, Why D3, D2, NAIA athletes are better than D1 athletes. Now, let's dive right into this because I know it's a lot of people who, uh, especially like the common football fan. I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak strictly on football right now because that's my expertise. That's what I played. 
Um, but this is relevant for basketball as well because I got a lot of uh basket guys that friends that play basketball in on a D three or D two or NAIA level, straight dogs, right? So how we, we gonna do with this one, man? I'm I'm gonna explain to y'all why D three, D two, NAIA athletes are better than the D one athletes. Now, what I want you to do right now is completely eliminate the bias and hear me out. Let me get through this. Uh, what I'm saying, I'm now. I'm not saying I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and try to convince y'all that. Uh, you got guys that's like uh. So I'm gonna just say this like this: you got the world class athletes, right? World class guys, and what I mean by that is your your Cam Newtons, your Deion Sanders, uh, your Trevor Lawrence's, Justin Fields, you know those type of guys, your Justin Jeffersons, and you know those world class guys, right? Uh, Christian McCaffrey's and just those guys who you knew were gonna be the guy their whole life. Their whole life, they've been the guy, right? And they, they yes, they end up at Power Five schools, D one Power Five schools, or whatever, and they're the guy all the way through their career in high school, college, and in the NFL. Exclude those guys from this conversation. Now, we still have those guys on the smaller levels, and I'll name some of those as this show goes on who are actually in the league right now that you may not have even known played on a small school level, right? I'll get to that later, though. So what I mean by that when I say it, right, you got to understand this. Everybody can't go D1, right? So think about when you were in school. It's probably some dogs. Whether you played sport or not, whether you played the sport or not, you probably went to the games or you probably heard about it, probably saw some footage or whatever, right? Straight dogs on the field. Most of those dogs that you know that you saw play didn't go D1. There's only a certain number of spots and there's only a certain number of scholarships and a certain amount of money that D1 schools can give out, uh, you know, per year. And I'm speaking on the FBS, the bowl guy, the big schools, they get the rank, the top 25 guys and all that. Not the FCS, which is D1 subdivision. I myself consider that small school as well. With like a, so there's a lot of HBCU schools in there. You got schools like Western Illinois, Northern, I mean, yeah, Western Illinois. And, you know, look, just a couple, you know, subdivision schools. D1 subdivision is what it was called back in my time, right? Everybody can't go D1. And what I mean by that is, like myself, I can kind of give y'all some of my background, right? In high school, I was... uh. MVP of my senior year. I was MVP of my team. I was a lineman, O-line, D-line, MVP of the team. That's rare. I was one of the best. I was the best lineman in my whole area uh, my senior year in high school, right? But we also helped dealt, dealt with a coaching change on my, on my, my senior year. We had a brand-new head coach. Now, the, the coach before that in my junior year when I played, first year back off injury, I did my thing all conference. He was looking out for me. He, had, he sent a bunch of guys D1. He was going to do the same with me, but – Ended up getting fired, brought in a new guy. Now, back in my day, I was right on the border of, like, VHS, DVD, switching over to DVD, right? But in back in my day, it wasn't like now where you can just, coaches can go in the huddle or you can make a highlight tape and send them your huddle. It wasn't like that. So I was, I was nice, right? And I was kind of a casualty because my team that year, my senior year, we weren't that good. The, the year before that, we were really good. Now, you got a lot of guys who are really good, playing on trash teams. So back in my day, like I said, there was no huddle, there was no Instagram, no Facebook, none of that stuff where you can record and put your film out and people can see it. it what there was none of that. You had to get your games from the coach, had, or you had to. The process was you had to go and buy VHS tapes at the store, bring them to your coach, give them to your coach, so your coach could make copies, could copy the game film from his VHS to yours and give you the tapes back or send them out. So what in schools back then were not off. I had a bunch of D1 schools looking at me. I got tons of letters, tons of calls, tons of visits from D1 schools. My fr I was verbally committed to a D1 subdivision school. Granted, I didn't know anything about the college recruiting process, right? I didn't know anything about college. I had nobody in my family played co college uh, athlete. Ath nobody in my family was a college athlete. It was only a handful that had went before me. So I just was like, okay, cool. I'm going to just go where I can play, right? For, so to make a long story short, all of my big offers, like my D1 schools, they, they, they would not offer you without film, regardless to your accolades. Now, I had the accolades to back up 
everything, right? I was all area, like I said, MVP of the team. I got the awards posted in my house right now. All area, all conference, I was everything. Uh, but I didn't have the film because I, I brought, now I had the tapes, took them to my coach. He said he would make copies. He didn't. Now, he was supposed, we, I gave him a list of, he said, give me a list of schools you want me to send these tapes to. Now, these schools, these coaches that are calling me, telling me, man, say, tell your coach, send the tape. We want you, but we got to have the tape before we can offer you. I gave him, I did my part. He never sent the tapes. I'm getting calls weekly. They could, back then, they can only call you like twice a week. I'm getting calls weekly like, yo, that, I, didn't, I don't got the tape. I don't have the tape. So I would go back, coach, where's the tape? Where's the tape? Long story short, probably about a month before I graduated high school, he gave me the tapes back with the game film on him. He never sent the tapes. So that limited where I could go. At that point, it was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to go who, with, with who wants me. A lot of the D1 offers that I still had, they told me I had the red shirt. Put weight on in red shirt. I thought that meant, with my lack of knowledge, I thought that meant that you were trash if you had the red shirt. So I'm like, I'm just going to go somewhere they're going to let me play. So I went to a D3 school. Me and my boy, who was another D1 caliber player. Did I think, had a great time. But that was the reason why I went. And so you got to take that into account, like, a lot of guys who are really, really good suffer from suffer, suffer uh, from bad programs, playing on a terrible team, and just when you because when your team's not good, a lot of those coaches aren't really coming to check for you, right? So you got guys who slip through the cracks, and then plus, like I said, there's only a certain number of spots, certain amount of money you can give out at a D1 program. So where do you think all those other athletes go? They're going to go where they want it. They're going to go to D2 schools. They're going to go to NAI schools. They're going to go to D3 schools. And they still going to ball. Now, my next point, that's just one of my points, right? Letting you guys know everybody cannot go. So you have to understand if you understand life in general. Every, just like everybody can't go to the league, it's still guys, it's, it's guys out here right now that, that's good enough to play in the league, good enough to be starters in the league, working regular jobs just didn't work out you know what i mean so now you got to understand this there are more small schools than there are big schools power five and all of that so understand the talent pool i played now now from a person who played on the, on that level on those levels right most per the common the common football fan would think okay d1 that's the end all be all you think then you hear d2 Oh, uh, yeah, those boys probably ain't that good. D3, are oh, they really suck? NAI, I don't even know what that is. See, that's where you go. That's where you mess up at. And I'm telling you this from an experience standpoint. You can ask any athlete who's ever played, even the guys that are in the NFL right now that played D2, D3, NAI. The talent level does not change from D1 all the way down. The talent is still there. The competition level is still there. You got ballers that play just as well as the top guys in D1. That's all through. Everybody that's on the field is tough. Tough. The only, the skill positions, there's no drop off. The skill position guys are on the same level as the D1 guys 100%. The only, or only position group that I would say you can make an argument, and it's not talent-wise, because the talent is still there. It's just size-wise. It's the line, the O-line and the D-line. Me, I was a big lineman, so, you know, I fit the criteria of a D1 lineman all across the board. But there were other guys, there were, there were linemen that were like 5'9". Tough, though. Tough. Just weren't blessed with size. You know what I mean? That's probably the only drop-off is the O-line, D-line because of size. But everybody's still tough. Competition is crazy. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'll do you one better. The numbers. If you take. Your, if you take your own time. If you think I'm cap, go look at the numbers. Matter of fact, let me give y'all some numbers. Let's compare numbers because I know a lot of my people out here. Y'all like to. Y'all. Y'all want to compare numbers, right? So I'm. A, I'm gonna give y'all some numbers. Now let's go to D1. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm gonna kick it off with D1, right? FBS. So these are the big guys, all of the guys that y'all see on TV, your Colorados, your Oregons, your USC's, your Ohio States. Let's start there. We're going to start with passing. Now, the number one passer in Division I FBS football 
right now is my boy who I like a lot, Michael Penix Jr., who I feel like is the best in, best in the business right now. He has a total of 3,695 passing yards. 3,695 passing yards. Now I'm going to go from there. I'm going to take out a D3. The number one passer in D3 right now, his name is Destin Chance, Illinois College. He has a total of 4,008 passing yards. 4,008 passing yards, which is more than my boy, Michael Penix Jr. Let's take you out of D2. D2, the number one passer in D2, Zach Zabrowski, who we mentioned on the Highly Integrated Sports Podcast. Central Missouri. My boy has 4,732 passing yards. 4,732 passing yards. Okay. (laughs) Well, hey, numbers don't lie. That's what they say, right? Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. You know what I mean? There's no talent gap. There's there's no time now. Don't get me wrong. It's so every I'm not saying every single person on a roster of on a D3 roster, a D2 roster, NAI roster can compete with the top D1 guys. I'm not saying that. But what you gotta know is this: there are bums on D1 teams as well, bro. There are bums on D1 rosters. There are guys who slip through the crack. There are guys that got scholarships because they wanted one player at a school so bad. So where the coach told him, look, you got to take both of these boys. You got to take all three of these guys. And the other two dudes is bums. But you got to take all three if you want him. So they going to offer all three because they want him that bad. There are a lot of bums. There are a lot of guys who had some – it's easy now. All you got to do is put together a good highlight tape now with Huddle. It's guys who played in in, in very, very small uh, conferences dominate those kids because just because he's bigger gets a d1 get a d1 offer from minnesota he get there and he's terrible yes that happens but when you got guys now there are bums on there's there's bums on d3 d2 in the i rosters as well there's bums everywhere but what i'm saying is exclude those super elite guys fill in the rosters with those d2 d3 in the i guys there will be no talent there will be no talent to, I can guarantee you that. Let's move on. Let's go to let's go to Russian. If y'all think okay, cool. Y'all think it's cap. Move on to these Russian yards. Russian yards. The number one rusher in D one in Division one football right now, Ali Gordon, Oklahoma State. He has one thousand four hundred and fourteen yards. Division three. The number one rusher in Division three, Monty Quinn out of Curry. He has one thousand six hundred eighteen yards. D two. Number one rusher in D2, Gage Porter, Southern Nazarene. He has 1,739 yards. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you pay attention to the numbers, if you pay attention to the performances, you pay attention, just look at the stats. You can look at their film as well, just like you can go and watch uh, Michael Penix Jr. highlight tape on YouTube. If you type these kids' names in, I'm pretty sure they got some footage up there. Go, Just go watch them. They're just as electrifying. They put up the same, they put up better numbers. Come on, the numbers are better. You can't deny the numbers. That's what y'all like, the numbers, right? You can't deny the numbers, man. The numbers are there. So um, what I'm saying is these same guys that I'm naming, that I'm mentioning from these lower levels, they they can play ball with the best. I've played it just because I played D3 football. I've played outside of that. I had another career. I played, I played indoor football. I played uh, minor league football. And and I've played against a ton of D1 guys. I've always had my best games against those guys. I rise to the competition. I've always had my best games. In my personal opinion, I've only won against one guy who was, he was a kickback from D1. He played at University of Dubuque that I felt like was really like that. That's the only one. The rest of those guys, I felt like, bro, if you were on that team, you didn't get no burn because you not even like that. I know for a fact I was really like that. The cards just didn't really, you know, they was it was kind of a little, my my journey was my journey. That's why I'm here doing this right now to shine light on all of my guys and girls who putting on right now at the smaller schools. Another thing I want to bring up is when you play a small school ball, right? Uh, there's not as much money for scholarships as it is for D1. So like in, in like D3, you don't even get athletic scholarships. You can get a, a bunch of other scholarships. You can't get a full scholarship in most of those schools. I don't know unless the rules have changed now for for athletics you can't right D2 you can not D3 
So, or I'm not sure about NAIA. So for you, for a lot of us, man, who play, so the grind is a lot harder. Uh, when you go D1, you go to these big schools, you go there, all you got to do is get there. Once, you, once you're there, they're going to provide everything for you, your cleats, your gloves, your everything. When you playing in, the, in these small schools, bro, you got to get that stuff yourself. And then on top of that, they they get like they were getting like when you were a scholar when you were a scholarship athlete even before NILs and all that you would still get a stipend a monthly stipend at, at when you play D one and D two D three and that you don't get that so you gotta you got a lot of guys who play football and you gotta go to school because you have to stay eligible we don't get any special treatment or anything like that we're not the you're not the prize possession and you got to be on the field because you're making this school so much money no nah, you have to really be a student athlete you have to master that so you have to learn to balance practice morning practice class all through the day afternoon practice and class again if you got night class or study table or whatever and work out in between now you got to learn how to balance all of that it's tough so unless you really love the game unless you really love what you're doing it's hard. Like it's, it's it's very hard. I ha- I got guys who I know. Ho- I got homies who play D one. One of my boys who played D one told me he said, "Man, I wake up in the morning and I go lift, and I go back to sleep. I don't go to class, and then I just wake up and go to practice. And then after practice, I go chill again. It's just football. They didn't have to. My my work was emailed to me. Oh, I would get virtual lessons from my teacher. Things like that. Like nah, they make it easy for those guys. Because they're making the school so much money. When you're playing on lower levels now, you got to really grind. And that grind really, it makes you take it personal. That's why I'm making this video right now. Just to show y'all, just to let y'all know, man, like, it's not sweet on these levels, on these small school levels. Like, no, it's really ballers, man. It's really ballers. Some of y'all favorite players in the league right now, or y'all favorite teams are built on a lot of our backs. Trust me. Trust me. I'm going to get to that, though. I'm going to get to that. So... Um, D1 players, and, and it's no knock. It's no knock to my people playing D1 because if we, if we, if we all could do it, we all would. Like, don't get me wrong. It's if if it's that sweet, let's do it. You know. And I'm not saying it's not a grind because I know it, it is. You gotta. And it's not. It's just it's it's like a step below professional football, right? If you're there for a reason, and if you can't cut the mustard, they just gonna move you to the back of the line and bring up the next guy. In the smaller schools, you can kind of get more one-on-one work with your coach because they care about the overall team's success. These D1 coaches, they they coaching for millions. So their job is on the line, bro. So they don't really got much time to put into you like that. You're supposed to come kind of ready-made. They're going to get you. They're going to do what they can. But if you ain't cutting it, bro, you on a short leash, we're going to holler at you. We're going to holler at you, bro. You know what I mean? So, And then the differences in, in facilities. I've been to a lot of D1 schools, man. Like I said, I got homies who played there. I've been on visits and everything. The facilities are ridiculous. They're crazy. Small schools, some of them do have some solid facilities, but some of them don't. A lot of my HBCU schools, man, the facilities are trash. Those boys are still putting in work. And before Coach Prime, y'all didn't even know about them. We got to start paying more attention, man, because it still bothers us at Jackson State right now. Still a great coaching staff. Still a bunch of great ballers right now, you know. So it's time to put the world. It's time to put the world on notice, man. It's time to put the world on notice. You have to really love this game in order to thug it out at these smaller levels, man. Because and it's like when you get a chance to compete against somebody who, whether you 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 can be at the park working out, and a guy pulls up to work out that's just home for a couple weeks, but he goes to a D1 school. He goes to Ohio State. He may be a third-string DB. You a starting receiver out at Morningside, NAI school. You you you, was, you a, you're number one on the roster, right? You the guy. I know you got to know you're going to want to get some work with him. You, 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 got a, you, you got a chip on your shoulder, naturally. I'm telling you, there's no talent gap. Y'all see the numbers, man. The numbers are not lying. Let's look at, let's look, I'm going to do you one more. Let's go to scoring offenses. Since y'all think it's a game, let's go to scoring offenses, right? Because we watch, we watch Oregon score all these points. We watch LSU score all of these points, right? 
The number one scoring offense in FBS football is LSU with 46.8 points a game. Remember that, 46.8 points. The number one scoring offense in Division Three. Shout out to Northwestern, man. I mean, Northwestern, I'm sorry. North Central. North Central, man. It's in Elmhurst, Illinois, man. It's a bunch of guys that are friends of the show that went there and that go there currently. Dogs, those boys, they won a state championship. I mean, they won a national championship last year. I know they're going to, they playoffs just kicked off last weekend, so they're going to make another run. But North Central University or North Central College, whatever one you want to call it, right? Small school, D3. Scoring, the, the offensive scoring, 62 points a game. 62. LSU was what? Y'all don't remember the number I told you for LSU? 46.8. North Central, 62. And I'm going to go to, I'm, I'm going to do you one better. The number two school, Mount St. Joseph, 55.4. 55.4. Aurora University out in Aurora, Illinois, 54.9. That's number three. Barry. Barry University, 53.4. Mount Union, one of the top schools always in D3, 51.4. Alma, number six, out in Michigan. They were in my conference, 49.5. Come on, man. Randolph Macon, number seven, 48.8. I got to go all the way to number 10, Wheaton, 46.4, to match LSU. That's Division three. They putting up points. They putting up points. These are top schools, going against top schools. North Central plays in one of the best conferences in Division Three football. 62 points a game. D2. D2. Offensive scoring offenses. Harding, number one, 51.5 points per game. Colorado School of Mines competed for the national championship last year, but they lost uh, 51.1. Central Missouri with the quarterback. I don't know his yards. 50.7. Number four, Grand Valley State. Matthew Judon went there. I know y'all know him. One of the most elite pass rushers in the game right now, New England Patriots. 49 points a game. We got to go to number five just before we get to what LSU, 45 points, 45.2. It's not a game, man. The talent is crazy. You got to think there are more athletes on these levels, bro. All of those guys who were good enough to play D1, but they didn't get a chance to, where do you think they're going? They go into the smaller schools, and they put no. It don't change, man. Let me get y'all before I get out of here, man, because I'm going to wrap this up, man. I'm going to wrap this up, man. I just wanted to come, you know, jump and kick it off the right way, kick it off giving love to my small schools, because this will be, this the kind of activity you're going to see moving forward. But I'm going to get into that a little bit as well. But let me get y'all some notable names, some D3 guys, and then I'm going to get y'all some D2 guys as well. But let me get y'all some D3 guys. In the NFL right now. We got the boy Anthony Kendall. Now, he was the only. He went to Baldwin Wallace University. He's a cornerback. He was the only Division three player offered a contract this offseason, this past offseason. The only one. The rest of them were all unsigned free agents. It made rosters. Trust me. Y'all going to know. The, the names I'm, I'm, I'm going to mention, y'all, y'all, y'all will know these names. If y'all don't, sorry for you. You're not a real football fan. I get it. Anthony Kendall, man, Baldwin, Baldwin Wallace University. Dog. He's a dog. Tennessee. He's a, he's he out in Tennessee. Tennessee Titans. We got um we got Darius Williams, man. Cornerback. Darius Williams, LA Rams, cornerback. D3 guy. Come on, man. Come on. Y'all didn't even know that. Y'all didn't know that. Dan Arnold, tight end. He was with my Jags for a minute. He was with Carolina. He went to UW Platteville. That's D3. That's D3. Come on, man. Dan Arnold is really like that. He's nice. Ben Barch, D3 guy. He went to St. John's. We drafted him in, in Duval. We drafted him. He played for us. We just cut him probably like two weeks ago because we traded for another offensive lineman. Ben had got hurt. He was starting for us. He was starting for like the last two seasons. He got hurt. I want to say last season, season in the injury, he never really rebounded from it. But I'm sure somebody else, if they haven't already signed him, he will be signed. I can guarantee you that. Nicholas Morrow from Greenville University, D3. He's the linebacker, bro. He starts for the Philadelphia Eagles right now. He was starting with the Chicago Bears before he got to Philly. He's a starter. That Philly, that Philly defense is real. That front seven is crazy. The front seven is crazy. He's a part of that. 
this is world class talent, man. These are all the guys that y'all should know if you don't know. I'm gonna even go back. I'm gonna go back to guys that were in the league. Now, this guy, he was in the league all the way, I want to say, up until Tom Brady's last season. Ali Marpe, he was a guard. He's one of the best guards. He was one of the best guards in football when he played. He was a D3 guy. He was a D3 guy. Beast, he retired at a young age because he wanted to focus on something else. London Fletcher, one of the best linebackers to ever play the game. He went to, he went to Carroll University, man. D3 guy. If y'all don't know who London Fletcher is, Something is wrong. Y'all need to go get right. Billy White Shoes Johnson. If you don't know him, something wrong. Old school, but come on, man, do your research. White Shoes was like that. D3 guy. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, it's not a game out here, man. It's not a game out here. We also had guys like my, one, of, one of my favorites who came out around the time I went into college. He went to Mount Union, Pierre Garçon. He was a wide receiver. He was one of the... He really opened my I was still in high school when he came out, but he really opened my eyes to Division Three football. Watching him come out of Mount Union, he went to the NFL and he became a starter. He was on the he was special teams kick return and all of that, but he became a starter, starting wide receiver. He had a great a pretty decent career in the NFL. He played for for a decent amount of time for a long time. Also, my boy Cecil Shorts, another receiver. He was a D three receiver as well for Mount Union. Both of those guys at Mount Union had decent careers in the NFL. Mason Kinsey, Barry College. He just came out like two seasons ago, two or three seasons ago. Made our players of the week list, highly underrated sports players of the week list a ton of times when he was still at Barry College. Still in the NFL right now. I think he's with the Tennessee Titans, wide receiver. Nice. Nice. We got ballers all over, man. It's ballers on active rosters right now. Seattle Seahawks have one, has one. My boy Joshua, he's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the, of the brand. We put his, his highlights are on our um, website right now from when he was in college. He sent them to us to post. He's This is his second year in Seattle. D-E-N. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Let me jump on D2. Let me see. I'm going to just throw this one out here. Now, I don't care if you're a common football fan or if you really love this game like me. The Chicago Bears, Justin Fields, we know Justin Fields was hurt. He just came back this weekend, but he was hurt the past, like, two or three weeks. Tyson Bajan, he was the number one passer in D2 last. He's a D2 guy from Shepard. He's a dog. He's made our list plenty of times. We talked about him on the podcast and everything plenty of times. Tyson came to the Bears, the undrafted free agent. He was QB4 in camp, QB4. He's now QB2. Everybody else on that roster, including I want to say PJ Williams was on PJ was on that roster. They all got cut. They kept him. And he started some games and he wasn't that bad. He actually won his first start. Come on, man. D2 guy. Like that, that's not, that's not, that's not nothing to take lightly, man. That's not nothing to take. Alex Kappa, Cincinnati Bengals, offensive lineman. He's a D2 guy. Y'all gotta pay attention, man. Y'all really gotta, y'all really gotta pay attention. Y'all didn't even know. My boy EJ Speed, Kenny Moore, Kenny Moore, Kenny Moore, cornerback out of uh out in Indianapolis. He's a division two guy. EJ Speed, division two guy. Gregory Jr., he's with us. He's a baller. He went crazy this uh in the preseason. He got hurt though. D2 guy, Austin Eckler, y'all man, Austin Eckler, fantasy god, D2 guy. Did you know that? Did you know that uh, Ethan Evans, y'all don't know, y'all probably don't know him, but Tyreek Hill went to West Alabama for a minute too. Did y'all know that? That's D2. Tyreek Hill, did y'all know that? That's Division Two. Feel me? You just, hey man, you just got to pay attention, man. CJ Ham, come on, man. CJ Ham, Matthew Junon, who I named already. Matthew Junon, one of the most elite pass rushers in the game. He went to Grand Valley State, Division Two. He's a dog. The talent is there, man. There's no slippage in talent. And there's many, many more. If I didn't mention your name, I do apologize, but there's too many for me to go through all of them, you know, to mention them all, man. But I just wanted to kind of, you know, like I said, I wanted to kick it off this way, man, and let y'all know, man, the, the, the small school guys are here, man. We ain't going nowhere. It's only getting worse. It's only getting worse and worse and worse for y'all boys, man, because check it out. At least 70 small school guys get a shot every year there's only 53 on a roster 
So if we are 70 now, and now it's crazy. Technology is crazy. All you got to do is post your post your film online and teams going to see you. Get invited. You can go to a pro day. You can go and go to somebody else's pro day. That's all you got to do now. It's a little bit easier, and y'all going to start to see because it's a lot more of these guys getting opportunities, man. So I'm proud. I'm proud of y'all, man. I'm proud of all my small school athletes, man, over here at Highly Underrated Sports. We are proud of y'all. We love y'all. And um, keep going. Keep going. If it's meant for you to get there, you will get there, man. But all in all, enjoy it because it will make you a better person. And I'm going to be here, me and the team. It's a bunch of us. We're going to make it, make sure we put on, man, to make sure the world is on notice, man. Stop paying attention. Stop paying so much attention to what you see on the TV, to these big D1 programs, man, which is it's some, it's some great football. But what I'm telling you is it's great football on D3 and great players, great football on D2, basketball, all of that. NAI, same. It's great. Watch the numbers and stuff that I bring, y'all. We might even slip in some interviews, too. Playoff time, basketball season coming up. I got some dog D3 athletes. I, my boy is a sports agent. It's finna get real. Shout out AI Sports Group. He got a bunch of D3 guys that he just got deals. They got deals overseas and all of that. I'm going to have to bring him on here, man, and let him let him tell y'all his for, his, for, for, for himself about the caliber of athletes that he deals with on a day-to-day basis, man. But real quick, before I get out of here, man, like I said, this is going to be something real short sweet. If y'all like this conversation that you know that we have it right now about you know D1 comparisons to D2 and D3, let me know, man, in the comments. And uh, we could do this again. I'll do a part two. Y'all could drop questions that y'all got for me or whatever. I want y'all to drop some crazy questions for me. Give me a hard time. Make me think, you know, put me in my bag. But, uh, yeah, if you got questions or anything like that, y'all want me to go over or talk about or uh, you want to ask me something, do it in the comments or DM me, man. DM us at, uh, highly, at highly Underrated Sports on everything, on, on uh, Instagram, on X, all of that. It's at Highly Underrated Sports for everything. And we, we will definitely touch on it, man. And tell a friend, tell a friend, man. Tag somebody in this, man. Let's get this going, man, because I'm we here to bring this for the people, man. I'm excited to do it, man. So I just want to kind of give a little insight on what's to come. So uh, like I said, we still going to do the Highly Integrated Sports Podcast with the fellas, but for this show, for Talent Has No Division, we're going to give y'all a basketball, baseball. We're going to give y'all football. All of the sports that's busting, we're going to give y'all a little piece of all of that throughout the weekly episodes, man. We'll give y'all a small piece of everything, man. So just be ready. It's going to be lit. Right, like I said, I'm going to try my best to give y'all this on a consistent weekly basis. Sometimes it will be twice a week. I'm going to get some dope interviews on here, man. We're going to have a good time, man. Let's turn up, man. Any type of sports-related questions y'all got. Uh, I got some info coming for all my high school players trying to get recruited that want to get recruited. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you, man. I'm going to help y'all get recruited. The next drop will probably be on that. So stay tuned, man. If you got, if a parent, you're a parent, you got kids, young kids, middle school, high school, trying to work on the highlight tape, trying to get some recruits, trying to get some attention, man. Make sure y'all tune in to that, man. Make sure y'all tune in to the next episode. Like, share, subscribe to the Highly Underrated Sports brand in general, man. This brand is here to prove that talent has no division. And we're going to make sure we get that done, man. So. I appreciate y'all for taking the time to watch this, man. It's just the beginning, and we finna keep it going, man. Y'all be blessed. Keep chasing y'all dreams because they real. No matter what it looked like at the beginning, it's gonna be hard. May not be that many views. May not be whatever, but trust me, they gonna pile up. The views gonna come. Everything gonna come. Just keep chasing it. Stay consistent and believe in God. Put God first, man. I love y'all. Thank y'all, man. We out.